cup of coffee, sit back and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life features stories to inspire and motivate you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Visit CYACYL.com. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. What would you do if you were able to create financial freedom that enabled you to follow your passion? Today's guest, Kate Northrup, did just that, and by the age of 28, Kate lives her life by the philosophy that if you can free yourself financially, you can be fully present to your life's purpose. Kate spent most of 2011 on a road trip called the Freedom Tour, where she taught financial, emotional, and spiritual freedom. She mentors entrepreneurs and is writing her first book due out in spring 2013. Welcome, Kate. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Kate, as I mentioned in the introduction, you've been able to create at a very young age what so many people spend their entire lives trying to accomplish. And you say that you've never had a quote-unquote real job your entire life. So how is it that you were able to set yourself on this path, and what is it that drove you at such a young age? So I got started learning about finances, personal finance, at the age of 16 when my parents went through a divorce and I really noticed how much financial upheaval came from that. And I I made a commitment to myself to never be in the position that I saw my mom in, which was really having to get it together financially at midlife. And I just decided to kind of hop on the train of financial literacy right along with her and started reading everything I could, especially by Robert Kiyosaki and Susie Orman, starting when I was 16 and then started a business in the network marketing industry when I was 18. So um, it certainly was not a straight path. There's been <laughs> many ups and downs along the way, but, mm-hmm. um, but I did get an early start, so it left me more room for error, I suppose. Kate, the interesting thing is that you mentioned the ups and downs, and I think that is when so many people give up. So what would you advise someone to do when they're in the down cycle? When you're in the down cycle... I would advise to remember that baby steps and daily choices are actually what create financial freedom. It, it's, it's not something that's created in a day. Um, you know, it took me 11 years or 10 years or so, and I'm still refining and still tweaking and expanding. And so it's the daily choices that we make to invest to spend, to save, to increase our rates, to start a new business. It's the little things on a daily basis that we do to prioritize freedom over perhaps accumulation or over instant gratification or things like that that make the difference. And so we can always just decide, you know, if we're having a down, a down time, we can just decide, you know what, right in this moment today, I'm going to make a choice towards freedom as opposed to a choice towards Um, getting stuck or a choice towards being trapped financially. Kate, so someone makes this choice toward financial freedom, and there are a lot of people out there that have done that, and they're working very, very hard, and they're doing supposedly all the right things, and yet they're struggling. I mean, it's a tough economy. So how can someone tangibly, what would some of these very tangible steps be so that they can reach the goal of financial freedom? I'm so glad you said that because working hard is not necessarily part of one of the action steps Mm -hmm. (laughs) that I include in financial freedom. But Kate, Um, yeah, and that's the thing that everybody thinks is the the key to it all. If I work hard, I'll achieve it. And that's not it, as you're saying. No, it is not it. Putting your nose to the grindstone, there are times for that. But just putting your nose to the grindstone alone can often keep you spinning your wheels. I mean, a car stuck in the mud looks like it's working really hard, but it's not going anywhere. So first of all, I just want to define financial freedom, which is that your passive or residual income is greater than your living expenses. And so you can get to that place two ways. One, you can increase your passive or residual income, and two, you can decrease your living expenses. And I got to it by doing both of those things. So I simplified my living expenses, and I increased my passive income, and uh, there was a moment when that equation just worked out. So it's financial freedom isn't this amorphous thing (laughs) that's out there. And so what you really need to do is look at in your life, okay, here's how I'm spending my waking hours. You know, maybe you're awake for 14, 16 hours during the day. 
Here's how I'm spending my waking hours. What activities can I be doing to build passive or residual income? And where are some, what are some ways that I can uh, decrease my living expenses and simplify in a way that still feels abundant and still feels good? And those are the things that create financial freedom. And neither of those necessarily has to do with working harder. I think when people hear financial freedom, they assume they need to be a millionaire. Hmm, and, yeah. and what you're saying is so simple. It's just having more than what you're putting out. Exactly. And I created financial freedom on an annual income of less than 50000 a year. Mm-hmm. So my income has increased since then, but um, I just really want people to know that financial freedom is a lot less expensive than they think it needs to be. And absolutely, if being a millionaire is your goal, that's fantastic. Go for it. But that's a different goal than being financially free. And many people who have six or seven figures in earnings or in the bank are not financially free. You know, if you're a CEO and you have to show up at work every day and you're working 80 hours a week and somebody else owns your time and owns your schedule, you may have abundance in your life. You may be making a lot of money, but you're not financially free. And and so financial freedom really means that your time is your own. And that is the most precious resource we have, not money. You can find more money all the time, but nobody gets more time. Okay, so the first thing that you advise is to earn more than what you're spending in living expenses. What is the next thing? Yeah, and and just to clarify, to earn more passive or residual income than what you're spending. And so let me just clarify what that is. That's income that comes in whether you're working or not. And so there's various ways to do it. Um, I do recommend reading Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, as a place to get started in learning about uh, ways to create passive residual income. You can invest in real estate. You can start a network marketing business. You can create an online product. There's a whole bunch of different ways. And then another great book for that is Tim Ferriss's The 4-Hour Workweek. Um, so once you figure out your, your method that you're going to start building, and perhaps it's on the side because you might be a, an employee right now and, and you need to obviously keep your job <laughs> so that you can um, have income coming in, but you want to be building up your passive or residual income in some way on the side so that not all of your income is tied hours for dollars. So that's a very important distinction. And then after that, what I would recommend doing is really looking at, um, you can look at your past year's um, expenses or maybe even just the past month. And what I really recommend is, is going through and looking at which expenses and remembering the moment when you spent that money or remembering what, what you purchased um, and, lo- and feeling into how, did you, how does that particular expense make you feel. And uh, this is not traditional financial planning wisdom, but, mm-hmm. but really, like, what, how did that dinner out feel? How did it feel to pay your, your health insurance? What does that give you in your life? Because money is simply a stand-in for what we value And so if we're spending our money on what we truly value, then everything gets into alignment and things work out much better versus if we're spending money on things that we think we should have or keeping up with the Joneses or things our mother thinks we should have or spending money because we want to try to look good. That's when your financial life gets out of whack, when you're not actually spending money on what you truly value. Kate, you work with a lot of people and and you offer this advice in your mentoring What are some of the common blocks that you find people have to putting what you're advising into practice? What blocks us? I think one of the primary things that blocks us is our own feeling of self-worth. And many times we'll be blocked from earning more income because we don't feel like we're worth it and we don't have the value lined up with that. So one of the things that I recommend you can do is start in a journal every night or first thing in the morning, just writing down three specific things that you value about yourself. So it could be something really simple, like I make rocking scrambled eggs, (laughs) or Uh it could be, you know, I really love the way my toes are, or, you know, some, it can be even silly. And just start getting into that practice of building the muscle of self-worth and self, self-value by acknowledging some of the things that are great about you. And then the next time you're in a financial situation where you're negotiating for a raise or raising your rates or starting a business or doing anything like that, that will actually kick in and you'll be able to increase your income in proportion to the way you've increased your self-value and the way you regard yourself. And Kate, that's very interesting because I don't think people really realize the impact that their thoughts and beliefs have on their earning ability. And it's huge. 
it's really it's really important. In fact, it's basically the only important thing because if our thoughts are in lack or in not deserving or in rich people are evil, right, because that's something a lot of us were taught growing up, if our thoughts are actually dictated by the blueprint that we had as a child and negativity around money, we will sabotage ourselves at every turn and we will not be able to take the consistent action required to create financial freedom because why would you let yourself become abundant and wealthy if you were taught that rich people are greedy or rich people are evil? You would just, your subconscious would never let you do that. And so it's really important to begin with looking at your beliefs and your thoughts around money and then take a look at your actions. Because if you don't line up your beliefs and thoughts, the actions will never make a difference. Kate, we've talked about our financial health and our emotional well-being. What about our physical health? Is there a connection? Absolutely. So the chakra system of the body, there are seven chakras or energy centers in the body, and they have to do with different organ systems. And the second chakra of the body has to do with the reproductive organ system and the low back as well. So it's that area of the body. And the second chakra has to do with money, sex, and power. And so it's it, for, for women especially, until very recently, remember we only got the right to vote in 1929, so it was really recent, mm-hmm. um, until recently women have only been able to wield power in the world through their sexuality. And so it's new for us that we're now able to wield power in the world through financial well-being as well. And I don't mean power over, right, because there's different types of power. There's the power over, which uh, renders somebody else powerless. But there's also power that you can use for good, for positive change in the world. And that's the kind of power I'm talking about. So oftentimes when our energy is out of whack financially, we may be leaking our creative energy into a dead-end job or a dead-end relationship that really doesn't serve us, that we know is wrong for us, but we're staying because of the money for some reason, or maybe working on a business project that you started really because of the money, but ultimately you're, you're realizing, ooh, it's not worth it because it doesn't feel like it's in alignment with your values. When we do those things, over time, it can actually impact your physical body, especially in the second chakra. And um, my mom, Dr. Christian Northrup, her work has been in this area, the second chakra, women's, women's health. She wrote a book called Um, women's bodies, women's wisdom. And Mm -hmm. she happened to meet Susie Orman, who wrote The Nine Steps to Financial Freedom and The Courage to Be Rich and a whole bunch of other books. They happened to be on the Today Show the same day. And Susie said something really profound um, when they met in the green room because they were having a conversation about their respective fields, gynecology and financial planning, which you wouldn't think would have a lot to do with one another. But Mm -hmm. what they found is Susie said that what she had noticed in her practice was that if people, if people had problems around their money, whether it was disorganization or not paying attention or issues around self-worth, they would affect their money first. And then if they didn't deal with them then, if they didn't get clarity, if they didn't start paying attention, if they didn't start really um, dealing with their money in a loving way, they would actually affect their, those issues would affect their bodies physically within about two years because our money never lies. Our money is either there or it's not there. But within your body, uh, we, have very, we have a lot of self-healing properties. And so our body will continue to heal and heal and heal until finally the energy is out of whack so much that your body just really is trying to give you a wake-up call. To me, it's, it's amazing. And I know people do not make the connection. And since you did mention it, your mom, Dr. Christian Northrup, was a guest on Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And if our listeners missed that episode, they can listen to it at cyacyl.com backslash podcasts. Kate, we need to take a break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life now has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox. Each month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide the information that you need to inspire and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. As philosopher Francis Bacon said, knowledge is power. Use the wisdom provided in the publication and apply it to your everyday life. Visit CYACYL.com for more information or to begin your free subscription. That's CYACYL.com. Welcome back to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman, and our guest today is Kate Northrup, an expert in helping people create their financial freedom. Kate, before break, we were talking about some strategies that we can employ to achieve financial freedom, and you spent the past year, 2011, on a freedom tour. What was the goal of this journey, and what were some of the lessons that you learned along the way? I'm so 
glad you asked that. <laughs> One of the primary lessons that I learned is the value of simplicity and the value of spaciousness, both in, in my spending habits and in my schedule. And when I started out on the Freedom Tour on this road trip, I was extremely ambitious with my scheduling, and I had myself booked um, almost every single night of the week in different cities doing lectures and workshops. And I burned out really quickly. Um, like within the first couple of weeks, mm-hmm. I totally burned out. And I got actually really sick. So I just learned, wow, okay, so um, freedom is definitely not about saying yes to everything. And freedom is definitely not about scheduling myself within an inch of my life so I can't even breathe. So I learned more about freedom from contrast and learning about what was what did not make me feel free than I did from organizing the whole tour around what actually made me free. So it was it was more by um by learning, you know, learning the hard way. Kate, what would you say to someone who's sitting home right now saying, "Sure, you know, she can offer this advice, but look, she's young, she's beautiful, she's highly educated. She's not me. I have the burdens of the world on me." What would you say to that person to convince them that they can follow in your footsteps? I'm really glad you asked that question. One of the reasons that I love working in the industry that I work in, which is the network marketing industry, is because it's completely egalitarian and there are no barriers to entry based on education, background, who you know, any of those things. And many of the people who built their businesses faster than I did and have become far more successful than I have, have kids, um, are... talk about one woman in particular. Her name is Colette, and she's the top income earner in our company. She started out her business when she was a single mother of five with two children with cystic fibrosis and um, hospital bills, medical bills, upwards in the hundreds of thousands of dollars that she couldn't pay. And slowly but surely, day by day, she built her business without, she was a high school dropout. She didn't have any particular connections or anything. She just simply had the desire. So when, there's, when anybody has a why that's strong enough, whether it's to, t- to care for your kids, whether it's to spend more time with your loved ones, to travel the world, to write a book, whatever that thing is that drives you, that's why we create financial freedom. Nobody wants money in the bank to just want money in the bank. We want money uh, and financial freedom and time freedom in order to create something meaningful in the world. I mean, that's the biggest kick there is. And so, you know, after a certain point, there's only so much you can uh, earn or so much money you can spend. And really, it has to come from that burning desire of what mark you want to leave in the world. And it doesn't matter where you came from, who you are. You have a unique gift. You're the only one like you. And the world needs what you have. And keeping yourself in financial um, ill health is not doing a service to anybody, especially your loved ones, your friends, your family, and the planet. So it's actually each of our duty to clear ourselves up financially and get into a place of well-being so that we can give our gifts to the world. Kate, where can our listeners go to to learn more about you and your work? KateNorthrup.com. There's a great PDF I have there called The Five Things You've Got to Do to Create Financial Freedom. And you can download that for free right there on the site. So again, Mm katenorthrup.com. Or as always, our listeners can visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our site, listen to past shows as podcasts, read the digital magazine, sign up for our mailing list, take part in the book club, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Kate, once again, thank you so much for joining us today. You've provided a wonderful reminder that when there's a will, there's a way, and that it's possible for any of us to achieve the financial freedom that you have. So thank you for, for sharing your wisdom and your advice with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.